Hi, today we're going to be talking about advanced selectors. Up until this point, when we've been writing our rules, we've been writing our rules for a specific type of tag. We've been saying H1 or P or H2. So we've really just focused on one thing that covers all the different elements of that type. But what if you don't want to style all of the links, just some of them? Or you don't want to style all of your lists, you just want to style some of them? Well, now we're going to talk about these type of advanced selectors that will let us do just that. CSS is going to give you so many options that in this lecture, I'm going to try to cover as many as I can, but it's still going to be up to you to go off and look up some more on your own as you need them. So let's start with the CSS selectors that follow the DOM. If you remember, the document object model is how the browser breaks up your page into a tree-like structure. So in this way, the browser actually knows if a paragraph comes directly after an H1 tag or if two paragraphs are siblings in the same section. We're going to utilize that to style just certain parts of your page. So descendant selectors are a way to say, hey, if you're inside a nav tag, I want you to style all the links that are inside the nav tag. Instead of doing all of them, just those ones. If you want to be even more specific, you can use the child selectors. This rule is very similar, except it says, all the A links need to be what we call direct descendants of the nav link. If you have a paragraph in there and you have some links in there, ignore that. They need to be directly underneath each other. The final one is adjacent sibling. That's not one I actually use very much in my own coding, but I wanted to let you know what it is because there's a really good chance you'll see it if you're looking at other people's code. How the adjacent sibling works is that the elements must be what we call the same level and follow each other. So if you have a section that has an H1 and then an ordered list, they would be siblings. If you had an H1 and then some other things and that ordered list was inside a paragraph, it wouldn't work that way. Next, we're going to talk about what we call ID selectors. IDs are used to identify a single element in the DOM. The way IDs work is that you would go in and you would, in your HTML, say something along the lines of ID equals header or ID equals footer was one they used to use a lot. Then, in your style sheet, using the pound symbol, you can identify which ones that you want to style. So right now, there's a small movement, but it's growing a little bit, to move out of the use of ID from CSS. They're saying there's really no point in using that, because a lot of people really just use this ID for JavaScript and things like that. But again, this is something you're going to be seeing a lot, so I want to introduce you to it. So let's see an example really quickly here, just on the screen, of how it works. In my HTML, I would go ahead and put in my source, my alt tag, but also ID equals main logo. Then in my style sheet, using the pound symbol along with the ID name, the browser is going to know, oh, whenever I see one of those images, I want to make sure I add this border and this margin. Class selectors are similar to IDs, but the difference is that classes can apply to a range of elements, not just one particular element in the DOM. So think of thumbnail images or the social icon medias. It's this idea of that, you know what, I want to be able to uh, style a big group of things all in the same way, but I don't want to necessarily style all of them that way. You don't want all of your images to be thumbnails, but you want a lot of them to be. You would write this code in a very similar manner. Over here in my HTML, I have class equals thumb, class equals thumb, class equals thumb. And in my CSS, instead of using the pound, you need to make sure you use the period or dot along with the class name, and then you can give it any rules. In this way, the page is going to go through and know that in, in addition to any styling you just put on images, you also want this styling for the thumbnails. So just to try to help you make it a little bit more clear, what's the difference between using classes and IDs? Well, first, you want to make sure you know the syntax. The period is for classes, and the pound is for IDs. You can't mess up on this, because the browser will not fix it for you if you put the wrong thing in front of your class or ID name. You want to remember that classes can be used multiple times. It makes sense in your HTML code to see class equals thumb, class equals thumb, class equals thumb because it's not supposed to be a specific part of the page. With IDs, it should be unique. You should only see ID equals, for instance, um, header, which we're not even using, once. You should only see ID equals main section once. 
So again, let's think of images and navigation bars. It's very common that you would want to format numerous, but not all the images the same way. And you would use classes for that. Where you might use an ID is I'm sure that you've been at some places where on the web page you see the navigation bar and the page that you're currently on is styled just slightly differently. And that makes sense because you can only be at one page at a time and that's why you might choose to use the ID. So let's go ahead and go through a quick example using that navigation bar. So here's a sample HTML file where all I've done is put in four links that don't even really go anywhere. I've commented out the style sheet just so you can see what it would look like without any styling. You can see I've got my home, interests, resume, hobbies, and I have one additional link down here that I very badly called here. So let's go ahead and try adding a little bit of styling using these advanced selectors. Go over here. You can see that I've used the child element of actually just kind of the descendant of, hey, all the links that are in the navigation bar, I want to style differently. I want to give them a different background color, a different width, things like that. In addition, anything that's class current, I want to make even different than any other link or anything else we've seen that way. So let's go ahead and uncomment the style sheet. Save it. Go from this to this. You can see that only the links that are inside my navigation bar are styled. This one was left the same. And the one where I have class equals current does look different from the others. So it's really simple to use these things. You just need to know about them. As your pages get more advanced, you're going to want to narrow the scope of some of the rules. We only want to apply them to certain things. And one of the notations you can use for that uh, is the dot. So in your style sheet, you would actually have p.main. This means go and find all the paragraphs that are using the class main. Or you might have header image.special. This would mean find all the images that have image class equals special that belong in the header. It's just a way for you to really reduce what's being styled. On the same hand, you can also what we call expand the scope. So let's say that there's some sort of styling you want to apply to both the header and the footer, or to the sections and the articles. Not a problem. What you do is you just write the element and you include a comma right there to let it know. So just as a quick review, and this is something from much earlier, you need to think about what happens when there are multiple rules for the same selector. So you might have this one up here with the paragraph where it has certain uh, qualities it wants to share between paragraphs H1, the ID main, and the class special. But later, if you want to have additional styling for a paragraph, as long as you put that somewhere below, it's going to override and combine with anything that's higher up. So unless a rule has the exclamation word point important after it, it always just uses the last one it saw along with the earlier ones that don't conflict. In addition to the element selectors and the different DOM relationship selectors, we also have a few more that I want to talk about briefly. The first one is the universal selector, which is the star or the shift 8 on your keyboard. What this one does is it'll apply your styling to every single element on the page. It's absolutely crazy. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let you do it. But go ahead and put in a star, and then the style may be border around every element. It affects everything on your page. Sometimes it's nice for debugging. The next one you might want to think about using are what we call attribute selectors. Instead of going on the tags, you go on the attributes that go inside the tags. So in this case, it would go ahead and it would want to style every link where you have href equals info.html. And I'll do a quick example of that in just a second. But before I do that, I wanted to mention two more that we'll be looking at later, which are pseudo classes and pseudo elements. Just another level of distinguishing just certain things you want to style on your page. But first, let's go ahead and look at using these attribute selectors. So the way that attribute selectors work is that they search the DOM for elements that have the attribute that you are looking for. So for instance, you might want to look at all the images that use GIF files or all the images that have empty alt text, or maybe all the links that go to government sites or nonprofit sites or educational sites. It's really easy for us to find those and go ahead and style them a little differently. How we do that is we use operators to match the different parts of the alt text that you're looking for. So up here, we have what we call the caret. It's going to match the beginning. So in this case, it would match all those links that start with HTTP you mish, and it doesn't matter how it ends. The next one with the dollar sign, it's going to match the end exactly. It's going to find every file that ends in .png. 
We also have the wild card, where you're going in and saying, if you see UMISH in any part of any hyperreference at all, apply this rule. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a file that has different links, and each one has a different type of extension that we want to style differently. All right, so what I have here is just a list of links. There's no classes, nothing special about these, that goes to different university sites, organizations, government sites. And if you take a look, by default, it's just going to show up as your traditional blue links with underlined the text right there. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to go in and say, you know what? All the ones that end in .org, make them one color. All the ones that are .edu, another color. And all the ones that end in .gov, a third color. Let's see what it looks like. Here, you can see that without me having to put in any information inside the tags themselves, the browser has colored them the proper color. OK, I've just covered a lot of stuff in a very short video. You need to realize that these ideas are going to merge together. You're going to be using classes. You're going to be using IDs. You're going to be using attributes. And the important thing I want you to know is that when you are adding all these things together, the order that you write classes and different IDs in your text doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you have special early dark or dark early special. What really matters is the order that you write your rules in your style sheet. Browsers are always going to start at the top and apply each rule. Now, the good news from this lecture is that I want you to realize that with the power of classes and IDs in this cascading style sheet, is that this means you can use style sheets from other people to style your code, and you can just add a class that changes the one little attribute that maybe you didn't like about it. You can override these style sheets and make it your very own. Just make sure that you link your style sheet last. All right, we've covered a lot, and I'm hoping I didn't overwhelm you with this video. I just want you to remember that when we do type selectors and the kind of things I'm going to have you do in this class is that we usually are adding them to narrow the scope of where rules are applied. So we don't want to style everything. We only want to style certain things. An ID is used to specify a specific element in a page, and classes are used to associate elements that really tend to have the similar look. So as we go on, I know I'm going to have some code with me examples. I hope you'll stop, get out your laptop, and really code with me to get an idea of how powerful these different things can be. Thanks.